Hi everyone, and welcome to the Tesla Economist. I'd really appreciate you hitting the thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. But firstly, I want to start with a disclaimer that I'm not a professional financial advisor, and that these trading tactics that I am about to explain to you are very risky, and you could actually lose everything that you invest in it doing these strategies. I just want to tell you about some of my experiences I'm not in any way recommending them. I'm also a long-term Tesla stockholder and I don't sell any of my stock. However, I keep up to date with the company regularly and just want to use this knowledge to trade as well. So 1000% or more returns, 10 times your money in just a few months. Yes, I've achieved this on numerous occasions I just wanted to share them with you. So I guess your instant question that comes to mind would be how? How did I make such incredible returns and so quickly? I did it through trading options, mainly Tesla call options, and usually two or three months out. I've done close to 100 trade Tesla options now, and I just thought I'd share with you some of the experiences and what I've learned on the way. So options are a ton of fun, but you have to be playing with money that not only you can afford to lose, but you won't even get too emotional if you do lose it all. all. Investing is quite similar to watching your favourite team play a football game. Buying options feels more like having money on the game while you're watching it. It becomes way more intense and fun, especially if you win. But beware because it is very similar to gambling. And if you have gambling addictions, I would recommend you steer clear of options. And if you don't know what options are, I would advise you to study more, but it is essentially a contract you have that gives you the right to buy a certain amount of shares at a set price before an expiry date. So the current price is less than the agreed amount, known as the strike price, at the expiry date then your options are worthless and you lose everything you spent on them. However, if the, if the stock price rises, options give you an incredible amount of leverage. You're dealing with about 10 or 20 times as many shares than if you'd purchased the same amount in stock. This means that when the stock price rises just 10%, that you'll likely double your money. Now, a 10% rise in a few months isn't that common in most stocks, but Tesla is an incredibly volatile stock. You're likely to see these sorts of swings almost every month. There's always something happening in the Tesla universe. And this is part of the trick. There is always something major happening in Tesla. Whether it's a new vehicle launching, some new technology, events, or just a record profit quarter, there's always something in the pipeline and always a good reason you never want to sell your stock. So all these factors affect the stock price swings. The trick is to wait for some big event and buy options prior and sell them after the event. Simple and easy, right? Of course not. So many of Tesla events have had such big builds up, build ups that the events are baked into the price, if not overbaked. Then the event occurs and the stock price actually drops. So how do you make money then? Well, I used to try this method and the events were spectacular. The products that would be released are revolutionary and life-changing, will have the potential to make trillions of dollars, yet the stock price goes down. This is also a common occurrence with Tesla. Really, Elon would tell us that all the potentials this company has, it would blow my mind. For example, the idea of a robo-taxi is so impressive that you would have expected the stock to double the next day. Yet very little happened. There are also times when the stock just gets slammed. Suddenly the press will be having a field day with some negative articles about Tesla and the stock will start to dive. In addition to that, Sometimes the stock just naturally goes down and it could drop significantly, like perhaps 20% in 
with no good reason. It's a very unpredictable stock, basically. So how do people trade it? Well, there are Wall Street professionals. They use all sorts of heuristics to judge when to buy and sell a stock. Their math skills are extraordinary. In other words, I'm not going to be able to compete with these people. So how do we differentiate ourselves? When I first started trading options, I bought whenever I thought the stock price was cheap and sold them to make a profit whenever it got higher, buying low and selling high. I worked out that I'd made about twice what I'd started with after a year of trading. And most of that profit was just from one big trade. So basically I was more or less breaking even, but it was a very loose strategy of me thinking I knew when Tesla had hit its highs and lows. So I improved my technique in case it got even lower. I used dollar cost averaging with my options. I'd wait for it to feel particularly lower than normal and I would run, I would buy an option con and buy an options contract. Then if it dipped perhaps another two or 3%, I'd pick up another. And then if it dropped again, one more, I never bought more than three times. It wasn't a rule or anything, but I thought three was probably enough to have. Despite this, it was always such a shock when it would keep going lower and lower after I bought options. It was truly unbelievable at times. You might say, then why didn't I buy even more when it kept crashing further? Well, hindsight is very easy, but when your entire stock portfolio is crashing, psychologically, it's hard to put money into it. And that is one of the tricks of a good investor buying on the dips. So I was becoming fairly proficient and experienced with options and Tesla as a company. There were some times when I was worried that Tesla's stock might break out suddenly. Yeah, I didn't have enough money at the time available to buy enough stock in case I missed out. So I would lock in the price with some options. And if they took off, then I was hedged. It was some of these options that really started to run. Eventually I realized the reason I did so well in these options was because I held them for a particular reason to hedge a certain price. And I'd ridden through making a quick 10% profit, then a hundred percent profit. I didn't take it. I kept going and going, not being distracted by the quick profits. And eventually it would often reach over 1000%. And, and these, I was buying out of the money options as well, which is why the return was much better as they're cheaper. So I'd look for a reason that I would essentially think I need to lock the price in now in case it jumps. And then if it jumps, be able to hold, for, hold on through the ride. I would do this by applying odds on various scenarios. This is, this is known as asymmetric investing. If you apply a 30% chance, of making 10 times your money, then it's a good return as long as you can make enough asymmetric investments to increase your odds of actually hitting the return. An example was battery day. Now there were four really big events coming up, record deliveries, battery day, S and P inclusion and record profits. All of these events were a big deal, but to have four, within the space of about a month of each other, well, this was too good to be true. If just one of these events moved the needle 10%, then you can double your money. But to have four shots at it, then what could go wrong? So what went wrong? There was a fifth event, believe it or not. Tesla suddenly announced they were going to split the stock. A stock split actually makes no difference to the company in any possible way, yet the split raised the stock price crazy. The options were up over a thousand percent. But it was early. We hadn't had the S&P inclusion or even battery day yet. It would be silly to sell the options now. But the S&P inclusion didn't happen. So that took a lot of the air out of the bubble and suddenly I was only up about 300%. Okay, so one extra event that increased the price 
but my first strike with S and P. But battery, battery day would come and save the day, and battery day was mind blowing. So, so much better than what I could imagine they would achieve. Yet the stock actually goes down. So all these events were fails when it came to the stock price. During COVID, the stock had crept back up to $800 after its COVID low. And I had a, t a target number of stocks that I wanted to reach in my portfolio, but I didn't have enough money for all of them at the time. So I bought some options and they were really expensive. Just one contract to lock in a hundred more shares. I don't know where I found the nerve to do it, but I ordered them. The stock climbed all the way up to 1800 after that. I had another thousand percent return. I did actually exercise this contract as I really wanted the shares. So what have I learned from all these experiences? The stock will rarely ever do what you expect. In fact, it feels like it always does the opposite. Be patient. I mean, really patient. If you're watching the stock to drop to do a trade, then when it has dropped, wait some more. If it drops again, then consider buying it. If it recovers, accept you missed out. I only like to be extra conservative of options. So you need real patience. I mean, perhaps you only do two or three trades a year. You can afford to wait out the right time. You just need to get it right once to make a few hundred percent return. Events that tend to move the needle the most are record profits. Tesla very often beat their profit and delivery estimates. If you think they're going to do particularly well one quarter and the stock price hasn't caught up, then you might be right. It's easy to say don't sell too early, but at the same time, if you've made a decent return quickly and there is some uncertainty, then take a decent profit if you have it. Exit strategies are tough because now you need to time the market right. Your exit strategy will depend on all sorts of things. If there are any events upcoming, then factor in the chances you think it impacting the stock and the price not already being baked in, or has a stock just had a good natural run and you don't feel it's about to crash back down. It's very easy to have a plan, but when you've actually doubled your money in a few weeks, your emotions are likely to too strong to stick to any plan and your initial plan didn't have all the information that you do now. So have a plan, sure, but also be willing to update your plan in real time if necessary. So it won't, the one thing it seems that all my biggest gains have in common, I bought them for a particular reason and I saw that reason through. Rather than, than just buying them low, um, and seeing what might happen. If they went up a bit more in an event, I made the biggest returns holding on until the event rather than selling during the build-up. The build-up could have been one or 200% return, but then to get 1000% return by holding on, it means you can be wrong the next 10 times and still break even. I'm also currently holding options waiting for the S&P indexes to start buying them up as I'm interested to see how that will go too. So we'll find out. Anyway, if you think you might be good at assigning probabilities and working out if the returns are weighted asymmetric and willing to happily, and I really do just about mean the word happy, to possibly lose thousands of dollars then perhaps you might want to try it too. But please learn about it all first. Okay, thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I look forward to your comments.